What's going on, guys? The good times keep on rolling in the tropics, at least on the Atlantic side. I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegis with you for another edition of Tropics Watch, and things are looking good. Now, post-peak, we're still technically in the peak, but September 10th marked the climatological peak of hurricane season, and again, things are nice and quiet. In this video, we're going to talk about Really not talk about Earl, but just wanted to mention that Earl is now post-tropical. So there are no name systems in the Atlantic as we move through September, the middle part of September anyway. We are watching one wave that is now currently over Africa. It has a very low opportunity for development. So really good news all around. We'll talk about why that is. And then we're going to look into the future over the next 10 days if there's anything to watch. There are a few little hints, at least close by in the Caribbean and then into the eastern part of Florida that just something to be mindful of, but really development chances over the next 10 days on the lower side. So again, given to what we've seen over the past few years and what we've seen historically speaking in this part of the year, in this part of hurricane season, we will take it and we are keeping our fingers crossed for sure that this continues. And in the short term, it does look like it is going to. Here we go with the area that could develop. Again, over the next five days, it has a very low chance. There is still a decent amount of Saharan dust out there. It is very atypical now that we are still talking about dust having this much of an impact on the hurricane season. By this point, really through the middle and latter stages of August, we've gotten rid of most of the detrimental dust. But you see, just getting ready to emerge there on the right side of your screen. That's our next wave. It could develop as it moves close to the Cabo Verde Islands and out into the central Atlantic. It is still very hostile out there. I mean, hostile is a good thing for us, bad for the storms. Dry air, wind shear, stable air. It's hard for thunderstorms to get going, and you can really see that. Again, look at all the clear sky through the leeward, windward islands, back to the central Atlantic. Now that Earl has gone through Bermuda, we're looking good. Most of the Caribbean, lots of sunshine. The western Gulf of Mexico, thumbs up. Eastern Gulf of Mexico, there's that weak disturbance that continues to bring rain. If you're living in Florida or Alabama, if you've had a pretty rainy couple of days, at least stormy, it's brought to you by that thing there. It is not tropical in nature, but again, things are looking good. I want to show you a couple of models now. We always talk about this, and I'll explain what these di crazy different colors are on your screen we always talk about, at least in this year, both the European and GFS have been extremely bullish on developing these waves that have moved off of Africa. They have completely not taken into account what is really going on environmentally in terms, on, in terms of the amount of dust, the amount of stable air that continues to rule the roost in the Atlantic. So again, that's the one thing we're going to take into consideration here. Uh, on these models that I show you, this is scientifically known as vorticity. It's the low to mid-level spin in the atmosphere. And what we're looking on this model for development is something like this. This is, again, post-tropical Earl. So we're looking, we're looking for something that looks like this. A, a tightly wound, if you will, red ball. The brighter the color, the more intense, if you will, the spin is. So I have highlighted here... That wave that will emerge off of Africa as we get into September 12th. There's also this little wave here that was previously highlighted by the Hurricane Center, but there's so much dry air out there that they are no longer highlighting that for development. But I'll show you. We're going to come back to this one in a couple of days. Well, at least a couple of days on the model. We'll come back to it in a second here. Here is that thing that's highlighted by the Hurricane Center now, and you see it's trying to get it to act together, but it is still broad. The wind, the arrows, I should say, on your screen, you see them there, that represents the wind direction. Again, for development, we need to see it tightly wound, and what we're still seeing here is more of that upside-down U-shape. That means it's an open wave, so it is not tropical at that point. Same deal for this guy as we get closer to the Leeward Islands in the Caribbean, but still watching that, even though it's not highlighted by the Hurricane Center. 
as we look towards September 17th, this is still on the Euro model now, we have that little entity still highlighted here. Regardless if it develops or not, this one should not be a player in any kind of landmass, okay? So that's still some good news through September 17th. Still watching that little weak wave, we could have some showery weather, some stormy weather as a result of that, maybe into Puerto Rico, getting into Haiti and the Dominican Republic or Cuba, maybe even into Florida as well. But it doesn't look like anything too terribly organized. And again, that's one of the reasons why the Hurricane Center doesn't have it highlighted. Now, the best opportunity for that thing that's over Africa to develop is once it gets into the North Atlantic. That's beyond five days, so that's why it has a yellow shot, and it's why it has a low shot of development. But it could be a name storm as we get into that 7 to 10 to 12 day period in the North Atlantic. Regardless, though, it's not going to impact land in the Caribbean, Bermuda, or the United States. So some good news there. I There have been some things trying to hint at something weak coming out of the Caribbean, maybe developing over Cuba or around Cuba, getting out into the Bahamas, and then around into Florida. You've seen that little flare up here. So that's something that we're going to watch in the extreme southwest Atlantic. That's in the 7 to 10 day period. Models, though, have highlighted that before, and it's really not coming to fruition. We're going to watch it, though. Uh, so, again, next 7 to 10 days, maybe a little something-something trying to get going. Western Bahamas, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Western Cuba, into around the Florida Straits area, extreme southwest Atlantic and southeast coast of the United States. So we are going to watch that. The GFS kind of paints uh, a little more of a stronger picture for that. But you have heard me gripe on the GFS all year long about how just crazy aggressive it has been on developing everything. We'd have like 20 named storms if the GFS was right. Thankfully, it has not been. Doing a good job, though, with this wave. Again, keeping it weak as it moves off of Africa. There is that early, the head tropical wave, if you will. You see some kind of spin there as it moves on through. This is now on September 17th. And again, same kind of scenario with the European solution. We have an open, weak tropical wave bringing some inclement weather to Puerto Rico, to Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and Cuba, but nothing organized. Don't think anything named at this point, but we'll continue to watch that for you guys again in the Caribbean, Leeward Islands, Windward Islands, Puerto Rico. Here again is that weak wave that is highlighted by the Hurricane Center now. It is very weak, even weaker than the European solution at this time. It's a little further west. Here is Bermuda for reference. We just got done with Earl, and again, it wasn't that bad. We were on the western side, the better side of that system, and the center is expected to stay out to sea, but there wasn't really too many crazy impacts, thankfully, to Bermuda from Earl. And then here's a little something-something again. You see that little open wave, that kink there trying to come up. Again, we'll watch that as we get into the 21st to the 25th. That is way, way out into the future. The one point I'm trying to make out of this is that we are going to keep things relatively quiet. Again, it only takes one, but I'm not seeing any signs screaming here that there's anything major over the next week. Again, maybe there's going to be something as we get into that 7 to 10 day period, but out in the main development region, look at all that orange, all of that dry air. We are going to keep that there. And again, that wave that I showed you on that model, that preceding wave of the one that is highlighted by the Hurricane Center, there is the thunderstorm activity. There's a few thunderstorms there, but it has to fight all of that dry air. Giving that one a thumbs up. Watching for the Leeward and Windward Islands over the next five to seven days, though, in Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Turks and Caicos for some inclement weather. So if you do have vacation plans, then there's something to keep in mind. If you do live there, something to keep in mind. But it's going to be hard for anything to organize. So again, in terms of anything super, super impactful, low opportunity, but still something that we are watching for you guys. One thing I want to show you, I keep on showing you this as we venture through hurricane season. We are now post 
the climatological peak. We are still technically in peak season, but there is a sharp decline as we move through the back half of September. And we are obviously hoping that that is going to continue or this holds true that we will start to see things back off in terms of even though it's been a low quiet year that we shut this thing down pretty quickly and i do think we will and hopefully that continues to remain looks to be the case the one deal is i showed you that i'm gonna go back i showed you the the flare up on the european and i don't know that we've we've talked about water temperature a lot in tropics watch this season but it hasn't been all that crazy above average unless you get to the North Atlantic. That's where it has been on the warmer side. And we did just have the highest energy producing hurricane on record in the North Atlantic. So and even in a quiet year, you can have stuff like that happen. And that was Hurricane Danielle. It generated the highest ACE, a metric known as accumulated cyclone energy. It takes an intensity and duration of the storm into account it was just kind of sitting up there for a long time as a category one hurricane and i mentioned that wave has a better opportunity for development once it gets into the north atlantic the environment is better in the subtropics it's really weird one of the reasons for that is the amount of dust when you have more particulate matter in the atmosphere it helps to reflect sunlight so while we haven't had many storms, we've had had a lot of dust, and that dust helping to reflect sunlight hasn't warmed the main development region in this area much. Now, it is still warm. If something got into an environment that was conducive for development, we would see it take advantage of untapped fuel, which is the warmer water, of course. But again, we can thank the dust due in part to the relatively speaking cooler main development region there are other things in play too but the dust having a, a major role on that now something and, and this goes into that it only takes one mantra there's a lot of deep warm water in the gulf of mexico and in the western caribbean if something got out here with the untapped water that would not be a good thing we all know that on a year-to-year -year basis, but especially this year with there haven't been anything even weak in the Gulf of Mexico to turn anything up. There's a lot of deep, warm water, so we want everything to stay out of there. We want everything to stay out of everywhere. We know that's not the case. We know that's not likely, but certainly into the western Gulf of Mexico. So that is going to be something that we are watching. There's nothing forecast to get in there. Just kind of, Just kind of saying again that only takes one mantra and really as we get into october that's one of the areas that we start to watch a little more closer those homegrown storms as those cold fronts start to come back down into the deep south we can get things to generate off of those quickly all righty guys that's all i have for you on this edition of tropics watch again in the short term things are looking really nice as we venture through the peak of hurricane season maybe a little something something toward the bahamas cuba maybe eastern florida well long range that's grasping at straws though thankfully um just for a little bit of something something and hopefully that does not come in into fruition but again a few little things hinting at that so we're going to watch that closely and again that weak wave moving through the caribbean for our friends in the leeward islands puerto rico cuba dominican republic haiti but again that is likely going to stay a weak open wave and just bring us some thunderstorms rather than anything organized hit me up on twitter it is at jonathan kegis you can continue the conversation over there and again if you have any questions comments post them in the comment section below again this is another edition of tropics watch